to Redtail CRM. We can add a contact from any page within Redtail CRM by navigating to the Quick Add option, which is located in the top right-hand corner of the database. You can identify it by finding the plus button here located in that top right-hand corner. After choosing Quick Add, we can go ahead and choose the second option, which is Contacts. After choosing Contacts, you are presented with five options, which represent different types of contacts that you can add to Redtail. They are individual, business, association, trust, and union. Today, we're gonna to focus on the most common type of contact added to Redtail, which is individual. Individual contacts are used for individual persons and their families. After choosing individual, I will be prompted to enter in the contacts first and last name. Now I want you to note that first and last name are the only two required fields that you need to enter in when adding a contact. Everything else on this page is optional and can be added at a later time. Now I also want you to notice that there is a warning here at the top of my page letting me know that there is a contact in my database that already exists with the same first and last name. At this point, it might be wise for me to navigate over to the contacts tab here on the left to see if this contact has already been added to Redtail. Now, it is entirely possible that you might have two contacts with the same first and last name. That's why this is just a warning and will not prevent you from adding the contact when you're finished. In fact, a great way to differentiate between contacts with the same first and last name is to give the contacts a nickname. Furthermore, you can also give the contact a job title as well as add their employer. Now, I want you to notice as I begin to type in the employer, Redtail is attempting to guess the name of the employer based off of the business contacts that exist within my database. So in this case, Teddy is the founder of the United States Forest Service. And the United States Forest Service is already a business contact in Redtail. Therefore, rather than having to create a new business contact to link Teddy to, I can go ahead and choose United States Forest Service from the dropdown, and Teddy will be linked to that already existing business contact in my database. Now, if I was adding an employer that doesn't exist in my database, no dropdown menu will appear and the name entered into this employer field will become the name of a new business contact inside Redtail. Continuing along, the next field to fill in is the family name. Common examples of the family name might include something like the Roosevelt family, or Mr. and Mrs. Roosevelt, or Mr. Teddy Roosevelt. It's important to note that when entering the family name, you should use the family name for how you would address this household formally. Think about if you were filling out their address on an envelope or addressing them in a letter or sending them a broadcast email. How would you want to address this contact? That's what you should enter in as the family name. At Redtail University, you're gonna learn some really cool tools called Mail Merge and Broadcast Email, where this field here can actually be merged into letters and emails that we would send out to our contacts in bulk. And so it's important that even for single individuals that you fill in the family name because we don't want this field to return back. 
If the individual that you're adding in has a spouse, you can go ahead and add in the spouse's information as well. Now, it's important to note that when adding in spouse's information, a separate contact will be created for that spouse. However, that separate contact will be linked to the individual using this family name. In Redtail, we treat every contact as its own person, but we link them together into households using the family name. Continuing along, the next information to enter in is what I like to call Rolodex data. This is information about the contact's address, phone numbers, email addresses, as well as any applicable URLs. Think company websites or social media accounts. Whenever adding in an address, a phone number, an email, or a URL, it's also important to indicate primary when adding in multiple. So for example here, if I was adding in Teddy's home address, as well as Teddy's work address, it's important to indicate which of these addresses is the primary. So if I'm gonna send Teddy something in the mail, I need to know which email, or excuse me, excuse me, which physical address I should be sending that letter to. And that is indicated by primary. It's also important to note that when you choose the types for home, this address here is actually gonna be shared between both the head of household and the spouse on the contact records. So even though Edith here is entered in as a separate record, the home address is going to be shared between the two contacts. That also applies for home phone numbers, Continuing along, the next information we're going to enter in is the contact details. First up is contact status. Contact status indicates the relationship that exists between this contact and our business. So for example, if Teddy is an active client, I can go ahead and use the status of client to indicate such. Other status examples might include something like prospect, maybe a former client, like inactive client, or another center of influence that you might come in contact with. Keep in mind that this drop-down menu is entirely customizable and unique to your database. The database admins can add or take away any of the options here on this list by going to the manage database list option found under your name and manage your account inside Redtail CRM. Next up is the contact category. The category allows for us to further segment from the status. So for example here, if Teddy is a client, I might put Teddy into a specific service tier like a triple A client. Triple A in this case might indicate a high value, high net worth type client versus a lower net worth client like a single A contact. The same thing can also be applied for things like prospects. If Teddy is a very valuable prospect and somebody who is very engaged with me uh, as a prospect, I might go ahead and indicate the hot category for Speaking of prospecting, another field we can enter in is the contact source. This indicates where did the contact come from? It helps assign the contact to one of our marketing channels. For example, things like networking, seminars, or even referrals. This becomes very valuable data for evaluating your different marketing channels. So 
If you want to know how many contacts were gained by doing seminars last year, you can run a report on that. Or how many of your contacts come from referrals? You can run a report on that. But you need the good data inside the source field to make it work. Speaking of referrals, you can also indicate a specific referral source by entering their name into the referred by field. So if Teddy was referred to me by Bob, I can go ahead and put Bob's name into the referred by field here, and that is going to credit Bob with this referral. Now notice that Bob's name here appears in a drop-down menu. This means that Bob has referred contacts to us before. And so rather than adding Bob as a new referral source, I can go ahead and choose Bob from the drop-down, and Teddy will be credited to Bob. Moving down the list, next up is Servicing Advisor. This is where we can go ahead and delegate ownership of the contact. So if Austin is the advisor to Teddy, we can go ahead and assign Austin as the Servicing Advisor. In the case where you might have a contact be split between multiple advisors, you can also use this Writing Advisor field as well. On the right side here, we have important data like gender, tax ID number, which is important for linking associated accounts to contacts in Redtail. If your contact is married, you can go ahead and indicate as such, as well as enter in their marital anniversary. By entering the marital anniversary, Redtail will actually send you reminders letting you know when this person has a marital anniversary allowing you the opportunity to establish client loyalty and appreciate your clients more by wishing them a happy anniversary. The same thing can also be done for the client sense field. Again, celebrating a client's years of commitment to your business as well as their birthday. So you can fill in the contact's birthday. And again, Redtail will send you reminders when it is that person's birthday so you can go ahead and give them a call or send them a birthday card in the mail. We also know that not every birthday in your database might be celebrated. And so you do have the option of always turning off that birthday reminder here by deselecting the enable DO birth DOB reminder, which stands for enable date of birth reminder. Moving along, next up we have what are called our keywords and tag groups. Keywords are going to be searchable identifiers that we apply to contact records to make them searchable within our database. So for example, I might use keywords to indicate what services I'll be providing to Teddy. Examples would include things like life insurance, retirement planning, as well as tax planning. And by giving these keywords to Teddy, when I go ahead and want to see a list of all of my tax clients, I can run a list by the keyword tax client to receive a list back of all of my tax clients. Other examples of keywords might include things like their communication preferences. For example, if Teddy prefers to be communicated with digitally, I can go ahead and indicate as such, or maybe Teddy doesn't like receiving emails from me. I can choose do not email as a keyword. Again, the options here are endless. You can create a keyword for anything that you might need a list for. To the right here, we also have what are called our tag groups. Now, keywords and tag groups are very, very similar. Difference comes into play with integrations. Most of our integrations are based off of tag groups. And so, for example, if I wanted Teddy's contact data to sync over to my Google Contacts using the Retriever for Cloud integration available with Redtail CRM, I can go ahead and assign Teddy to the Google Sync tag group, which will then tell Redtail to sync Teddy's data over to my Google Contacts. Other examples of tag groups might be creating things like prospecting lists. This can then be pushed into other marketing tools to be able to create drip campaigns for reaching out to your prospects. 
as well as your clients. Finally, we reach the last box in the add context page, which is the permissions and roles. Permissions control who has access to view the information on this contact. If you work in a shared database, it's mostly wise to leave this as everyone. However, if you find yourself in a situation where you want to keep this contact private to you and your team members, you can go ahead and set a permission to your selected team. What this means is that only members of Austin's team will be able to access and view this contact. To all the other members that are not on Austin's team, they will never see this contact. It won't show up on any reports. It's like it doesn't even exist. It keeps it completely private from all the other users in the database that aren't a member of Austin's team. And then finally, on the right-hand side here, we have options to assign an advisor, an associate advisor, as well as a customer service advocate. These are gonna come very important once we learn how to use workflows at Redtail University. But for now, just remember that they're here. Okay, now that we've entered in all of the information for our contact, we can either A, choose save contact, which will save the contact and direct us to that contact's record. If we wanna add in any further information, or if we happen to be entering in lots of different contacts, we can also choose to save this contact and then begin entering a new one. Okay, there you have it. That's how we add a contact into Redtail CRM. This is gonna be an essential skill for you to know as you attend your Redtail University. If you have any questions, you can reach out to us by emailing support at redtailtechnology.com or by calling our support lines at 800-206-5030, option number three. Thanks and excited to see you at Redtail University. Oh,